Hello everyone, welcome to the Jenkins Infrastructure Weekly Team Meeting. Today we are the 15th October of 2025. And around the virtual table, we have myself, Damien Duportal, Jay Franco, I, I love you, I, I love you. <laughs> Your handle, uh, we have Mark Waits, Stefan Merl, and Kevin Martins. Uh, let's quickly get started with announcements. So I'm back from holiday since yesterday. So I'm going to let Stefan or Mark tell me, hey, last week, weekly release 2.480. Oh, how did it well? Oh, did, very, did very it well? smooth. Very, very smooth. Good job. Stefan monitored it. Uh, I kept asking him questions. He kept saying, yes, it's good. Yes, it's good. Yes, it's good. Oh yes, I love when a good plan come together. <laughs> comes right. together. Uh, this week the weekly release two point four eight one started on time. It's currently running test. It should be finished in one hour and a half. Anything else on the weekly releases? No issue. No question. No issues. No questions that I've seen. Good. Do you have other announcements? Uh, oh yes, I do actually. Um, so okay. we'll be announcing it publicly. Uh, AWS has granted another sixty thousand dollars to the to the Jenkins project beginning second of February twenty twenty five. So the first donation of sixty thousand. Please don't don't share it widely because we'd like to announce it uh, separately. But it's it's okay. we're we're delighted. They've they've shared with us that. We'll do a blog post, etc. But they've shared that the the grant has been awarded. It makes the transition of CI.Jenkins.io to AWS even more important, right? Yeah, so, so that will be able to continue. Uh, I don't know the expiration date of the new donation. Its commencement date is two is one February. So, but one spe February. Okay. Special cool. thanks to to AWS for donating. And thanks to Michelle Martineau and the CD Foundation for their, their yeah, so nothing in this announcement verbally and on the recording, I'm fine with it be there, being there. Okay, so I can write things down as well? Uh, or we could, we, we keep just a rally? Let's hold, the let's record. hold on, okay. let's hold on that. Yeah, I okay. probably should have held it for, for another week, but let's, Michelle shared with me yesterday that it's been granted and and we'll yeah, okay. we'll systematically go through the announcement process now. Good news. Oh, oh, and well, another yeah. announcement, right? So, yep. Damien, you may not have been aware of this one. It's it happened in the time that you and this one we can write down. I'll write it down. So, um, the uh, Jenkins project has received a grant from Alpha Omega. Woohoo! Alpha yep. Omega Foundation. Um, it's for the content security project funding Shlomo Dahan and Yaroslava Fenkin for three months. And it's looking great. I, and cool. I mean, I mean, great. It's they've released uh, 10 or more uh, fixes in the few weeks that they've been running already. And that's just getting started. Wow. They are. They are, it, it's, it's very positive what's happening there. So yes, and that one's been announced already in a blog post. Ooh, uh, and and we, will ref, we will do a second blog post to announce the addition of Yaros, Yaroslav once his contract is finally signed. Congrats. That, thanks, Mark, for all the work behind the scene on these two announcements. Yeah. We we know that's a lot and that's silent work, but necessary work. So thanks for your involvement and your yeah, work. Yeah, we're clinic. we're we're really pleased. This is this is a really great. Those are both both really positive outcomes. Great. Cool. Other announcement while while we're there. I, More yeah, money. I, sorry, or... <laughs> sorry to go backwards, but I I don't I don't remember any other announcements. No, so no, those no those are sufficient. Cool. Everything good for everyone. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's continue on the upcoming calendar. So next week, we will have a weekly 4.82, as usual. The next LTS is scheduled for the 30 last day of October, uh, 2.479.1. No, no. no, the last day is the 31. I need to count on my fingers. Yeah, but that's discreetly. my birthday, and I'm <laughs> okay. telling you, well, I know. The, the antepenultium... <laughs> Days of October, <laughs> with Latin, I'm sure everyone will un will understand. <laughs> yeah, 
<laughs> yes, yes. Using the word penultimate in a sentence is really serious, serious work there. Way it's to go. So <laughs> I mean, I work with make back Robert enough to to start learning my words. Yes, correctly. exactly. Penultimate. Oh my, shame on you for using that word. Okay, good. Uh, so that release will be uh, built on top the baseline 2.479. So maybe you already say that, but I was out for two weeks. Uh, which means it's one version more than what I expected, but that's good news. And that yeah. version will feature um, end of life for Java 11. Yay. Right. Uh, and Spring Security 6. Correct. Uh, so that will be and, and and a lot of cleanups that I saw past. Thanks, Mark and the others, on the Docker images built. So, yes, yeah, so yep. so we've already stopped delivering Java eleven for the containers. Uh, so the next agent release will deliver no Java eleven. The next controller release will deliver no Java eleven. Yeah. Good news. Any question points on this one? So I will be present in any case that uh, Wednesday. Uh, Stefan, I've lost the count. I believe it in my memory, it's a weekend where you won't be that much available because of the kiddos, am I right? Or, or maybe it changed, but we're not sure. I... Yeah, we, yeah sure. Th th that one I'm comfortable. We will, because of my intense focus as the release lead, we will be focused on that and and if necessary we'll bring extra extra capacity however it takes <laughs> good so in any case we are covered uh, from the infra point of view so yes. no worries stefan if you cannot be there um we don't have announced security advisory as far as i checked last time nope. i checked so that's good news um uh, it looks like the work on the exper credential expiration is almost finished. We have one last issue. Let me open it and add it on the note I forgot while preparing. Uh, we have an Azure credential for CI Jenkins IO expiring the 19. That's the one used to create Azure VM agents. So that one will be done on the upcoming um, uh, upcoming milestone. Um, and yeah. Uh, CI Jenkins.io, Azure VM agents. Here we are. I haven't catched yet any other credential expiration. I uh, need to check in Azure UI with Esmer. And okay. if it's okay for you, Stefan, we will check after the meeting. I did not have time. We'll check the two of us. Uh, usually, that that the, the UI tells us many months in advance, way more than the three weeks that we usually had on the on the update CLI. So that will give us a view of the whole October and November. Okay. Anything else on credential expirations? One, two, three, no. Okay. Next major event. Uh, oh, this yes, good. Yep. This is Mark Waite complaining about the evils of governments adjusting clocks. <laughs> okay. uh, major event, I just know we have the first dem. Oh, yes, that's correct. In 1 to 2025 in Brussels. Oh, oh, right. And and on that one, I guess I do have another announcement. Oh, yeah, <laughs> okay. I, I know this one. <laughs> I was oh, I don't know. Careful, careful. Okay, so, oh, you were CC'd, you're right. I okay. was CC'd and I read the board <laughs> notes when they are published. Right, okay, so so the software in the public interest, SPI, previously was the home for the Jenkins project before CDF was created. $9,000 in funds has been sitting in the SPI bank account for use by the Jenkins project, uh, they can't transfer it to CDF because they're two different kinds of organizations and it would violate US tax law. Because of that, we need to spend that money and the Jenkins Governance Board and SPI have both confirmed that a good way to spend that money is to fund people to travel to FOSDEM for the Contributor Summit. 
So $9,000. Now, my assumption is CloudBees will fund CloudBees employees. That's my hope. And the 9000 we will spend on other people, like, for instance, possibly bringing Chris Stern from Hong Kong or bringing others, Uli Hafner, Alex Brandis, Valentin Delay, uh, Stefan Speaker, all from various parts of Europe. So we will use, my intent is to use the full $9,000 for that event, for travel for those people. Um, and we'll see if my my assumption works out or not. I don't expect any travel for US people to be funded by it or actually any CloudBees people to be funded by it because I think CloudBees will fund it itself. So so I'm I'm assuming right now that that's how it will look. We'll see. That's good news. Yeah. Cool. Now and if it turns out that CloudBees is unable to fund it, then I'll do we'll 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 then have to compare and see what what could that nine thousand dollars do to help which people attend the summit. Makes sense. Okay. So good. So no more major events, right, until first them. Right. That's that's it. Okay. So let's have a look at the meeting time change. Uh yes, so keep same meeting time in Paris time. Yeah, so so in the past, yeah. what we did is we said because more people from the from the organ from the in the meeting are in Paris time, let's just lock this meeting's time to Paris time. Whenever the French government changes their clocks, this meeting time changes. Does that work for you, or do we want to? Jay, for instance, is in a location where they don't change clocks. Kevin and I are in a location which changes clocks at a different point than the French government does. Uh, makes right now in the calendar of Google, I see that the the time change is the the twenty seven October in France of, yeah. of October in France, and and the next meeting for the twenty nine is um is still at at uh, two p.m. There is no change in the in yes the time. because it's already locked on Paris time. That's why right oh, right. Okay. So so what what your Stefan just described exactly his experience, which is what we hoped for. Because exactly. it's different than my experience, because when I look at the 29th, it's an hour later, because oh. my clock hasn't shifted yet. But the community so, meeting is is in the middle of it now. So and and we'll exactly. fix that. That 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 is an easy thing for us to fix. The question is for Jay. Jay, what that means is in two weeks, this meeting would be one hour later because of because of government meddling with clocks. I apologize for that, but that's what happened. Are you okay with that, Jay? Or do we need to push this to to an hour earlier to try to not be so late in your day? No, that's okay. We can try. Okay. We can try an hour later and see how that goes. All right. Oh, yeah. Oh, that one is a nightmare. I ate time changes. Ooh, yes. Yes. Thank you. Ask your government. I'll keep asking mine to stop meddling with clocks. That's good. They say don't that get... save money. I don't know how, but yeah. <laughs> it's not don't safe. don't get me starting on asking government in France. Oh, no, That's no, too no, sensitive no. topic. No, please, please don't go in jail. <laughs> just, just too soon. Just too soon. <laughs> okay, got it. All right. Um, okay. Kevin, Kevin, we didn't ask you. Are you okay with us exactly. locking to the Paris clock? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, great. All right. Cool. If it's a problem, let's try. Uh, don't hesitate to raise your voice next time and and we will search and find solutions, okay? Thanks for bringing that topic up, uh, Mark. Well, and thanks to Jay for reminding me of it. He and I were looking at the calendar when we oh, were meeting good. before. So thanks, Jay. Thanks, Jay, for reminding us of this. Okay, let's have a quick look at the cloud budgets. Uh, news are really good on the Azure CDF paid account for front. Uh, last month in September, we spent 3.8K only, far, far above the maximum limit we fixed to ourselves of 4.5. So all this money don't have to be paid by the CDF, which help funding other projects and the Jenkins projects. So that's really being very first class citizen. So thanks for everyone on that one. Uh, we have consume almost 2K this month. The forecast is around 4, 
Uh, I haven't had time to check why did it grew, but 300 bucks, bucks per month is acceptable. There might be, we might have had uh, more activity, different elements. So yeah, that's okay. We are far above the expectation. So that's good, good news. On the other hand, the Azure sponsorship credits uh, account, with, uh, the sponsored with credits is accelerating its spend. So that's good, we are spending it. However, that means we have more more priority uh, to move CI Jenkins IO because that's the main culprit as far as I can tell. Right. Well, and, and I suspect right now the reason we're <laughs> We're using the same technique with the CSP really project works. that we mm -hmm. used with the with the Spring Security project, which is we run acceptance test harness and plug in bomb to check that CSP things are non breaking. And guess what that means? We're spending money on on these large scale tests to assure that that we're not breaking things. So so it does. You're right. We need to get CI.Jenkins.io over to AWS so that we can use the AWS funds. Mm -hmm because the time will probably come when we need to go back to spending those Microsoft funds again as well. We'll continue exactly. spending Microsoft funds, I assume, through at least October and November, and then we may get quieter. Crossing fingers. Right, exactly. We, it's, it, we need to make the transition. Let's, let's get on to AWS when we can. On Digital Ocean, we keep we keep the usual rate, uh, so no alert here. As a reminder, we will have credits until end of year. We will start again uh, trying to renew, even if it's lower with them for next year. We have 15K sitting here. Um, so we'll see with them what are the comments. Okay. Uh, I, I think it, we will start to use them after moving CI Jenkins IU to AWS Great. or finishing the update center. Mm -hmm. So nothing more to say here. Uh, a word about AWS CloudBees. I didn't have time to check it. I have an SSO issue that I need to be fixed. Uh, uh, so I will assume we are on the same uh, forecast. I don't remember the numbers from past weeks. So let's assume it's quite steady. Yeah, the, the September amount that I saw was actually mm -hmm. well below the 6K. So oh. just if you write in there 6K, approximately 6K, that's great. Okay. The number I so, saw yeah. was was below 6k for the cloud beast spend. Okay. But I, I don't remember the yeah. exact. I appreciate that we capture the exact. So so let's keep it as approximate for now. Okay. Let's keep it like that way and I will update numbers and I will drop a message on the chat. Thanks. And thanks to the work of Jay and Stefan, we have started consuming credits on the AWS account. 30 34 credits. Not that much, but that's honest work. So right. thanks, folks. That's good. Okay. I got the I got the number if you want for the cloud biz AWS for last month. Oh, you do. Oh, cool. Yes, go yeah. ahead. Six thousand one hundred seven. Okay, good. Six one zero seven. Six one oh seven. Good. So like six one. Six one. Okay. Two. And do you have the current consumption? Um, months to date three point two one nine. Okay. So given that we're at the 15th, forecast is probably 6.4. Forecast is 6.776. Okay. okay. 6.8. 6.8 if you want, yes. Yep. Thanks. Great. Okay. Um, that one is a copy and pass from me. You see it and you don't see it anymore. <laughs> and same for this one. Okay. Oh no 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 that one. Don't take that one away. That one. That one is. Oh, that okay. one is one it I doesn't... just added. Okay. So you and I just got a request from Michelle Martineau of CDF mm -hmm. asking for a budget a 2025 cloud budget plan, and so you and I have the action item, Damien, to create a, a cloud budget. Okay. We will uh, do a separate meeting on this one. Right. Okay. So I assume taking in account uh, what we know about AWS. Yes. And what we know about uh, what we don't know about Microsoft. Okay, good. Correct. Uh, yeah, the, the Microsoft yeah. donation is valid until May, right? May thirty one. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you. Great. Okay. 
Anything else on cloud announcement, etc.? Nope. Okay. So let's jump on the topic that were finished during the past milestone. Uh, we had two credential rotation. Uh, so thanks, Stefan, for the help uh, on keeping all these rotation. And everything is uh, working. So one left, and we are OK for three months. A lot of spam issues. Yeah, uh, yep. no, no big deal. We'll keep, we'll keep handling them. Uh, we had issues related to a project named the Backend Extension Indexer, and we have an open issue by Daniel. So it looks like that Daniel put his hands on this one. Uh, with the help of team and the other person, uh, some improvement were made, at least a short-term fix that improved the situation on this one. As a reminder, we have an open item on the backlog since at least one year. That's the, the data generated by this thing is used to generate some part of the documentation on Jenkins.io related to the extension point and the keywords that, can, that we can find for all the plugins. So it was partially broken, partially working. There, there were and there are numerous issues. So at least now it's using GDK 17 and soon 21, as far as I can tell from the issues. So we had an issue about this one. Uh, the problem on the Java 11 instead of 17 was my fault. Uh, I realized that and when I started to learn pipeline library in 2021, uh, I converted some groovism that were separating string with dollars and I used simple codes, which has the result to set the variable literally inside the path instead of resolving it at the groovy so classic beginner errors and that's that stay there on that pipeline library for four years. So thanks team for catching this one. He, he cooked the error, but I'm saying I did the mistake because I searched, I, I was sure it was me and I wanted to, to say, what did I do? Anyway, it's fixed. Uh, we also have so another issue. Oh, sorry. Before you get off that one, Damien, I think you've, so I'm going to claim you've understated how important what Daniel did is so okay. we've we've lived for over a year now with backend extension in tech is sort of fundamentally broken. The most oh, important, the most important plugins, the most valuable plugins, the ones that are used by the most users were omitted completely from the list. Oh, well. And okay. and so Daniel's fix over the weekend, very, very grateful to Daniel for what he did. Daniel's fix over the weekend restored most of those plugins that were missing from the list. So if you, let's tip pick one, one that Mark Waite maintained. Git. So look for a Git <laughs> plugin. This one wasn't on the list before and had been off the list for a year, but there are 280,000 installations of this thing. If you go back one page, others that were not on the list, like credentials, mm -hmm. like... <laughs> So, no one used so, that. No exactly. Used no, no, there's no need for that one. That's an optional thing, right? So, so, and, and that kind of, or folders would be another one that was not on the list. So, so the list was woefully inadequate. It was so badly damaged, but we simply did not have time to, to fix it. Well, Daniel found a way to squeeze some time into his weekend and fixed it. And, and so even if nothing else happened, what Daniel did resolved a major problem for us, right? So he he solved it, it, all the other things that are being noted now of, oh, there's this problem and this problem. For me, those are those are 1% or less kind of problems compared to the 99% solution that Daniel gave us by making it work again. And, and I think people may not realize just how crucial what he did is. If you need that backend extension indexer page, if you're using the extension page, it was useless for a year. And, and now Daniel has made it very, very useful again for people who need it. Yeah, I, sorry. I so, to read his solution. That's really impressive. And the upcoming ideas they have about checking the bytecodes is... Well, well, wow. Yeah, well Just wow. It, the, the, the reality is the, the technique that that tool uses is, is kind of scary. And Jesse, <laughs> Jesse saying that is the wrong approach is certainly correct. But 
somebody rewriting the tool is is a big project as far as I can tell. And I certainly don't have capacity or time to rewrite it. We we put it as a Google Summer of Code candidate project. And one of Daniel's notes is, oh, there's a lot of junk that's been added to this repository issue list thanks to these uh, this attempt at Google Summer of Code. It's a bad choice for Google Summer of Code. It is just too complicated. Okay. And related to that topic and infra, uh, we had leftovers of a pipeline not using the proper <laughs> pipeline library. They were using artifact caching proxy as it directly on the pipeline. So since we removed and changed configuration, the coupling was too hard and was failing the pipeline since months now. Right. So it has been, uh, I told them they, we should be able to re at least stop using the width credential, but team fixed properly using the infra uh, shared library function. So that should not happen anymore. Thanks team for this one. Yes. Anything else on backend extension Ignixer that was finished? Nope. Oh, oh, what, one more that's, so you don't Finish. have it Finish. here. I've got one more item at the level, yep. same level as backend extension indexer. Is it mm -hmm. elsewhere in your list that the plugin side is now, or that the plugin health score is working again? Uh, I thought it was fixed last week, right, Stefan? Yeah, we worked during this, that week. I, I, um... Ah, okay. So it oh, already been the, the update. So Great. So... If it had already been announced, yeah. that's great. I, I just... I, for well, me, it was. I'm a not sure thing. we announced that because I I published the the update version from uh, from Adrian during the 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 week, so we need oh, to okay. talk about that. So yeah. it's a, a, it's an, on the closing milestone. So I'm not sure right. there's an L desk on that. It's just uh, the pull request to uh, to update the version that uh, that bumped, and I and I okay. It. So I might have missed this one then. Yeah. Please, Daniel, because build. there's no issue. Uh, because it's still on status Jenkins IO, as far as I can tell. Yes. Oh, it is. Oh. You're right, and it needs to be removed from status.jenkins.io as well. Right. Okay. It was. It's still open because I said that we were waiting, waiting for that meeting to close it. Oh, okay. Good. So let me add it to the. So it's still on the open items because we need to close status before closing yeah. the issue. Right, right. Very good. Yes, because you're right. Status is is right now incorrect. It is saying that plugin health scores are not computed, but in fact they are computed, exactly. at least on the it's set a, that I it's checked. It's a few day. Right. Okay. Okay. And the title. And we were okay. Good. Good catch. I thought it was done. So yes, as per what uh, Stefan just said. However, we need to keep track of this. Okay, it's on the work in progress. Uh, scores are now computed since a few days, thanks to uh, at Le Sharp and at Esmeral. Uh, uh, no, have, it's essentially Adrien. Have we to have be the, the leader someone, ha someone has to deploy in production and help Adrien gather and if it's working some logs, or not. Yes. Yeah. But, but if no one is there for doing that, we Adrian did we did pair together to to go faster. Mm -hmm. So thanks, Adrien, Stefan. Mm -hmm. Credits you to close okay. status.jenkins.io outage and ready to close. Good, thanks. Uh, on the outages infra issues, uh, mm -hmm. thanks, Stefan, you were able to fix two uh, un unexpected issues. Uh, Friday afternoon uh, looks like uh, Azure decided to stop providing some kind of nodes. So that was impairing our ability to have container agent on infra CI. So Stefan fixed it uh, uh, with a nice technique by using the the, say, the bigger size on the I scale. thought you were saying by spending more money, which is a good nah, <laughs> nah. <laughs> and and so we cannot measure because it's using the subscription, the credit subscription, yeah, thought, yeah. and it's not sure it's using more money because the usage we have when we have a build we might have other builds. So sometimes if we have to uh, to start a bigger machine instead of two, the cost is closely the same. So that was a nice technique and it worked. So thanks, Stefan. Mm -hmm. And you also were able to analyze, diagnose, and fix in a nice way uh, that we never talked about, 
failures and sometimes Microsoft decides to publish base image for its virtual machine where OpenSSH doesn't work anymore for that specific Windows version. Yeah, Magica. So they usually have a cycle of one major version per month, sometimes two, but most of the time one. And until next month, we have to pin the Azure version, the Windows 2019 version. And Stefan is finishing the work to have something that automatically, automatically updates. So we will control when we update the base image. Yeah, and that, that little thing happened exactly the same time the Git uh, version update failed uh, because not available on the apt-get install. That was mm -hmm. at the same exact same time. Yeah, a lot of different Packer images things to fix, but one by one, we don't have a golden bullet for fixing uh, or them all. That one is a good, a really good one that will help a lot. I hope so. So we had an issue about a user enabled to create a Jira account because a temporal blocker, so they should be good now. We had a word request for someone who wanted the PAT created for their uh, Jenkins CI plugin. So after pointing them to lot solution, looks like they they use the button are done. Mm -hmm. um, no documentation and no Java Doc shown on my plugin page. So a new a new plugin was missing things on plugin Jenkins IO. I'm not sure what did fix their issue. It's fixed, they confirmed now. Looks like there have been a Javadoc fix. Is that correct, Mark? And so the, you have the same statement I would have, which is all I did was keep watching and eventually things started working again without me taking any constructive action to make them work. And so the problem then is, yes, Javadoc pages appeared that one i think we only generate roughly once a week so that a delay is not a shock yes but, and that's but confirmed. the plugin site i think was at least for a period not generating and when it was fixed mm -hmm. it started generating so so i think it was just a matter that we had jobs that were failing that have now started succeeding again okay makes sense thanks mark uh, we also had an issue plugin site improperly displays GitHub release. So that was a bug in a component name uh, plugin site issues uh, that is uh, used by when generating the plugin website that retrieve information about the Jira or GitHub issues and not only the releases and everything. I so would like the... to thank Adrian on that one because I asked yes. him help. And that's good. Thanks, Ala Sharp. For the fix at Daniel, I smell. I agree. So by the way, that was an opportunity to see that that component is also poorly maintained on infra side. It still have two different pipelines for doing the same thing. That's the usual pattern of we want CI Jenkins IO to build it like plugin yield score, for instance, if a contributor proposes something, because we want them to have checks they can read by themselves, so available publicly. We started to have a distinct pipeline because we started by only building Docker images on Infra CI at the beginning. Now we can build on both thanks to the pipeline library. So we should be able to provide way more insight to the contributors by having checks on CI Jenkins IO that build the application, then the Docker image from the application, like plugin nil score, same pattern. And infra CI should do exactly the same pipeline, except it deploys if it's on the main branch. So I've opened issues about this one, but yeah, at least the initial problem is fixed. And just a thing, I saw that issue being closed last week. I think the work uh, uh, is from two or three weeks ago. So thanks, Basil, and everyone involved on bumping the Maven version on GitHub Actions. That I'm not sure if it's really on the Jenkins Infra team scope. However, we could help. On, we could have helped on this one, but missing time. So thanks for everyone taking care of this one. We are we had four issue closed as not planned because off topic or not related to the Infra. And now work in progress, your, ti your time folks to speak. Uh, so we did the plugin health score. 
Um, oh, no, sorry. I wasn't looking at the right section. CI Jenkins, I move to AWS. Uh, Jay, what's the status around moving ephemeral VM agent for CI Jenkins IO to AWS? So uh, just give me a second. So should I go run over the whole issue from the top just, level code? Just, just give us a status. What was done at high level and what yeah, needs so, to be done next? So to migrate CI Jenkins.io from our Azure sponsored account to AWS sponsored account, we needed to uh, create we needed to create Linux and Windows based uh, AMI images to create our Jenkins agents. <clears throat> so the work has started on Packer images and we were successfully able to create Linux AMI images using our Amazon builder. So the work for Windows is in progress. And yeah, that's the top level summary. Next, Windows, Windows AMIs and optimizations. She say security, at, okay. Yeah, we uh, were able to test the uh, dry run our garbage collector scripts as well, which was doing the job that it was intended to. Mm -hmm. So the testing for that is successful as well. Let's see of AWS resources, okay, good. Um, there is also, the next step is also start adding EC2 plugin on CI Jenkins IO. That's also something to anticipate right yes. now because we yeah. will need to run this AMI. The only way for saying the, the work is done here is to have a Jenkins controller with EC2 able to use this AMI for spinning up agents. Good, thanks. Stefan, can you give us a status on the virtual network to define for AWS? So yes. we have worked with Packer outside this. That virtual network is for CI Jenkins IO itself, not the Packer uh, builds. Exactly. We even mm -hmm. defined an, uh, a specific user for Packer. Um, for the network, I was stopped last week because I had uh, issues with the module, the Terraform module that I was using to, to prepare that network and I was uh, um, blocked with the, the multiple IP for the getaway. And in fact, we discovered that for now, it's not handled by that module the way we wanted at that time. But by reading more the, the documentation, we agree that uh, a, a possible solution for us is to use um, uh, multiple uh, gateway, one gateway per subnet. And as we plan to have three different subnets, private subnet, uh, that will mean uh, three getaway. And uh, when the module will improve, we would be able to use two or more IPs per getaway. So if we really need more IP to spread the load, the load and, and avoid the rate limit, we will be able to. And, and worst case scenario, we, we stop using the, the module and we, we define every, um, every resource manually and then we will be able to use secondary ips for the for the getaways um right now um we did uh, publish a working network vpc virtual private uh I forgot the c vpc c i don't know don't remember but still the network and um it's uh, it's looking good we now have to uh, go on the all the security measure and uh, and start uh, um, building that uh, that uh, CI, new CI instance and see exactly how to handle all the all the networks. Oh, and and we did also uh, uh, discover that we need a, a public subnet, um, and we thought we didn't. In fact, we need because of those getaway that need to be to have one foot in the public subnet. 
So some improvement in the in the initial issue. In the net in the net gateway to allow internet egress. We we avoid multiple uh, availability zone like like we we plan. Yep. Great job because uh, that network is foundational for everything on CI Jenkins IO. So great great work. Uh, cool. So that means we are ready to start uh, working on the on the v on the VM for the controller and starting the EKS cluster. Exactly. Okay, so more on this a bit later. Next item, Infra Statistic has no new data since 1st July. So uh, we know KK is now having VPN access. So I'm assuming that uh, everything being automated by him and Andrew, uh, I'm assuming that the data is now present on census. I've asked Dao, uh, I don't know what is the exact process for getting the data from census to the infra statistics repository on the GH page. I've, I've asked the question on the issue because I found a pipeline here, a Jenkins pipeline that looks like it should run on trusted CI, but I cannot find a job on trusted CI. So the job on CI is only building and simulating with, uh, with Jumi data. Uh, it's mostly probable that we remove the job on trusted CI thinking it was related to another statistics project and we messed up. I think I'm the culprit here, but I prefer asking because maybe there is another pro uh, process that I'm not aware of. I'm not sure where to start to get the proper information on that topic. I will need to search deeper on the hold L desk and the hold in Jira. And also in the IEP or GEP, there might be information. So I've asked directly Andrew, Daniel, at least, uh, and Olivier. So now the the items for us in on the infra is to find that solution. And if it's broken, to fix it in order to have the data published on the GH page branch of that repository. If anyone has recollection, please comment on the issue and we will be able to proceed uh, further. Thanks, Kosuke and Andrew, for the work you are doing here to help us. No question? No. OK, next topic uh, related to updating the GeoIP databases we have for our mirrors, at least get Jenkins IO. Stefan, could you give us uh, an update um, on this one? Not really, because I haven't done much. I'm uh, ready to to use it really, and I was uh, waiting for your comeback to check with you if we provide a specific um, service account for service principle for um, that um, that uh, um, easy copy thing, or if we are reusing an existing one. Mm -hmm. And did did we speak about that yesterday? I forgot if we if no. we spoke about that. So yes, okay. we we yep. have to. So I propose that we reschedule this one not for the upcoming milestone, but for in two milestone because you will be in a long weekend later today. Yes. Uh, if it's okay for you, Stefan. Oh no, you have long afternoon of meeting, right? Yes. Okay, so let's delay in two week uh, in uh, when you're back. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to move this in two milestone instead of next milestone. Thank you. Uh, delaying as Stefan is on days off. Okay. So just a quick check. Uh, we are 10 minutes late. So we add a first a big set of issues that were planned or delayed to the new starting milestone. Uh, first one, we had things around plugin health code. No, sorry, I messed up the section. So let me move this to the proper section. One thing less in the work in progress, good. Uh, main topic I'm resuming, if the priority is still okay, uh, updates Jenkins IO migration. So I've, I've done before my early days, the post-mortem on the issue. Um, we ha So we have two main topic. One is uh, I have proposed two writes on the HTML pages generated by uh, Update Center system 
to write absolute links instead of relative links that will avoid error 404 when we are on the new system because Apache redirect to a mirror and the page has in the web browser the URL of the mirror, meaning the relative links are using the same host name. If these links were directed to a file that will be part of the update center that will work. However, it, these links are using the redirection system in Apache and they are redirected to get Jenkins IO. I'm not sure if it's exhaustive. I'm not sure if all requests are redirected to get Jenkins IO or, or, or only a partial subset. So as such, my proposal is to use absolute link to force the links to redirect to update Jenkins IO top level domain. Uh, Daniel did not seem uh, uh, really in okay with that, but he wasn't able to find, uh, let's say, a real reason. The reason I found by searching the history is that that technique of relative links was used when the Jenkins.io domain, top level domain, was created, meaning they used update Jenkins CI.org and update Jenkins IO on the same Apache web server. So in that context, that's, that was a really good reason to use relative links because you cannot detect which domain is used by the users. And when that change was made, first, everything was HTTP only. HTTPS was optional. There were no redirection. And second, the, uh, the redirect of the HTTP client in Jenkins in charge of retrieving the data wasn't able to follow redirects back in that time. So clearly, adding a top-level domain will generate a, a course error or a redirect error. That's not the case anymore. So that's why the proposal here is to say, hey, it's already triggering redirection to get Jenkins IO. So the second problem is fixed. Let's assume that update Jenkins IO is the top-level domain. Since it's a C name to subsystem, that's that's a different hypothesis than what we had in the in the in the past. So I'll I'll I'm gonna need to check the feedbacks from Daniel and see with him. So that's the first blocking problem. And the second one, uh, we had issue related on Apache. The main task here is for us to run the test harness that uh, uh, Daniel put on the update center and run it on Azure Update Jenkins IO that trigger at least that issue and other issue, fix all of them, and then resume the normal work. So I'm going to resume work. Uh, that's nothing done. Um, something else also to add. Daniel complained about the time of the update center, because now we have set it to 10 minutes. The generation in itself is between 7 to 8 minutes. Most costly. Uh, operation is the AWS copy to Cloudflare. The more we are going on improving that system, the more we realize that Cloudflare using S3 R2 might not be the best idea and most uh, implementation here because Mirrorbits doesn't support S3 scanning. So we had to create complex Dumi copy of the world data and we, we, uh, we we are cheating because Mirrorbit scanned the AirSync. We fake, thanks. We are faking the Air2 with inside aid Azure. So that is a bit annoying and it's spending time. So I'm going to work on that part because we should be under five minutes, clearly. Uh, otherwise, that starts to be quite stressful for the security team to work on. One of the alternatives and one something that Stefan mentioned that could be worth starting to have at least one machine, a virtual machine somewhere with a basic Apache or Nginx server, I don't care, just serving files and SSH and AirSync. We add it as a mirror and we start filling it. So we need to find a machine in a location where we can afford paying for outbound bandwidth or we we have cheap bandwidth. That's not the case on Cloudflare. Uh, long term, we could work on mirror bits to implement S3 scanning instead of FTP or AirSync or next to FTP or AirSync, but that's that's a long shot. So in order to be sure that we don't break everything, we will check about this one. So uh, eventually, 
get away from Cloudflare. Or at least find one VM with AirSync somewhere. Um, we can start also uh, new sponsorings, but uh, I mean, we have credits on DigitalOcean to get started. And we have Etzner, who is a German uh, cloud provider who provide cheap machines with almost, yeah, 100 bucks per month will be a big machine, bigger than the current update Jenkins IU machine on their cloud provider. And we would have 50 terabyte of outbound bandwidth for free. So theoretically, we could move the machine as it's on Etzner for 100 bucks per month. So I think it's worth considering for a mirror. So we could, if Cloudflare is an issue, we can remove it for whatever reason, for generation performance, or if they decide to stop sponsoring for us. So I'm going to study this one, and that could be an alternative if we are locked with the timings and problems here. Anything else on that topic? So I will report next week to, to give you a status about do we need a brownout, something else, What uh, where are we? Three new free GSOC items that I delayed. I need to check the permission. Uh, Stefan cannot help me on this one. That's why I delayed because uh, we have to be admin of the Jenkins Infra GitHub organization for the three of them. Uh, a word about Node.js providing to developer. So we had an issue on Docs Jenkins IO that is now fixed and I'm, I'm going to close it. But I wanted to bring the topic here because uh, Jay and Stefan suffer during the Packer image of more and more errors when downloading Node.js from their own servers and Python from Chocolatey system. Both of them are sending a rates limit issue or internal server issue. So clearly, same problem as Docker Hub and Repo Jenkins CI and Artifactory Central and some Maven Central, sorry. Um, they start to suffer from download publics. So we could have caching. In the case of Node.js, we are lucky to have a Jenkins tool available. So maybe we should rethink the way we provide Node.js to the developer on CI Jenkins IO. ASDF is slow to download things and install them. So maybe we should stop letting developer choose their Node.js using ASDF, which provide no control, no safety, no checksums. And instead, we remove it from Packer image. We download Node.js from custom tools. And since we have copy of Node.js installers on repo Jenkins CI, that could be a way to use it through Artifactory. That doesn't solve the problem on Python, so I want to extend the brainstorming here. Stefan proposed, hey, what about using an HTTP proxy definition when building the images on Packer image? So we could use artifact caching proxy or another caching proxy only for that. That will cache all the downloads, not just downloads, Python downloads, whatever download we do in when building the Packer images. Clearly, that will help because the failure rate due to downloads is clearly terrible and is slowing us down when building images or working on Packer images. So that's food for thought. I wanted to bring the topic, Stefan open issues. I propose we delay these issues of one week because Stefan is out, so I won't be able to work on all topic, neither will Jay. Uh, but I wanted to provide that insight here because that could be easy to add it to ACP, which is already there. So so for me, ACP, it, it, you say it's easy to add it to ACP because I'm accustomed to thinking of ACP as predominantly a cache for Maven based artifacts, but this, the usage you're describing is not really a Maven based artifact. ACP can easily cache non Maven based requests. Absolutely. Ah, okay. The, the problem by reusing ACP, the, the existing ACP is more, hey, if we want to build an image on a Amazon, we need an ACP on Amazon. We need mm -hmm. instances close to the instances. I objected right. that initially to Stefan when he proposed the issue. However, we could have dedicated ACP instance just for this. I, I, I ask for a specific uh, proxy, so not 
ACP or, or anything else. But... But ACP is a proxy. I mean, ACP yeah. related. ACP is thanks to the, uh, we have a contributor for CloudBees that use ACP for, uh, for, I don't know, for his customers. And he proposed contribution on the M chart so we can fine tune the pattern of the backend URL that which we are proxying. So theoretically, we could use it for anything. And worst case, we start a squid proxy with the data disk and let's roll. Okay. The problem here is that it looks like ASDF doesn't support HTTP proxy. And if it supports, it's per ASDF plugin. For instance, the Python and uh, Node.js plugin doesn't support HTTP proxy. So yet another reason to get away from ASDF. It start to be clobbered. It's not safe and it will suffer from supply chain attacks soon given how low the security process is on it. That's all for this one. And finally, we have an issue. I, I delayed it to this week. I will uh, remove it from the milestone. It's the GH API rate limit. So Stefan, unless you object, I propose this one goes to the backlog. I object, but that's okay. I mean, I'm not here. <laughs> <laughs> um, back to backlog. Okay, uh, finally, we have a bunch of new issues. Uh, one I propose to move to backlog. Uh, James, uh, I'm not even sure it's on the help desk. Uh, that should be on the help desk. It looks like the plugin Jenkins IO when generating the readme of plugins from the markdown readme is not using a GitHub flavor markdown. So GitHub flavor markdown propose some specific uh, rendering such as admonitions. Uh, so the the technical writer in me says, why don't we use ASCII doctor everywhere and we're done? But that will be quite the effort to change all plugins. However, you can convert markdown to ASCII doctor easy. I'm just saying. Um, that will require development on the plugin generation side because there are a lot of uh, JavaScript libraries and command lines that are able to use GitHub API to render Markdown. So that's insane. You use Markdown and you make requests to a third part, uh, API web service to get HTML back in return that is generated from their own proprietary implementation. Yeah. That require work on plugin Jenkins IO. Any contribution is welcome. I'm sure that could be an October first issue, but it might be a bit late for that. Uh, so this one, I'm not sure if it should move. Are there any objection if we move that issue to the plugin site and mark it as good beginner? Because it's, I don't think it's a complicated one. It, I think it should be moved to the plugin site. I, I think you're going to find that it's not a beginner issue, but I don't object to marking it as such and mm -hmm. then discovering that after the fact. <laughs> Fair. I, I don't think, I, I think it's non-trivial, but- You know Damien now, yeah. Everything <laughs> is trivial for Damien. Yeah, but moving it is the right thing because certainly we're not going to, we're not, the infra team is not going to spend time on that. It's not, not an infra team topic really. Here we are. Uh, we have three new update CLI uh, tiny issues. Jay, if you are bored or blocked, uh, Stefan created them just for you. It's related to the new AWS uh, repository. Uh, we'll need to update the title and labels, but I will, uh, thanks Stefan for taking care of this. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, the two first one, 50 and 51, are easy. Uh, you have a working example either on the current repository or on the old AWS one. And the one with the outbound IP, I rely on Stefan. Uh, we have reports with IPs uh, and we will need to update the local file with these IPs. If they change on the report, they must change locally. However, so, some well. IPs are not in the report yet. So we'll have to, we will have to list which one are missing. But uh, we did yeah, that kind of exercise. Yeah. But priorities on the 50 and 51, these one are important to work on, most priority. And if you have time on the third one, but if you have time, I would prefer you spending it on the Packer image stuff. And on CI Jenkins IO, I've set up all my issues as triage. However, uh, thanks Jay for 
creating sub sub task for Packer image. So let's go over this one. I will schedule them on the go. Uh, and the other have been created and reviewed. So I propose we don't need to spend time on this. Because more important, we have this issue to look at. Uh, the first one, thanks Mark for opening that issue. Oh, what did I do? Uh, so we have issues on get Jenkins IO. Uh, we saw people redirected to mirrors on we, in which the files are not existing. Uh, the root cause issue is because when we migrated from one Redis to the other, looks like we should have uh, started from an empty database and let the mirror scan populate the database. Migrating the records made the records completely orphaned. And that's the root cause. Now that um, some mirrors have garbage collected old items, the, the mirror scan removed the duplicated item, but the orphan is still there, resulting on, hey, get Jenkins, so you say, I got a line here, let's, re let's redirect while it should not. So we only have one solution here that will be announcing an operation where we will empty the Redis database and trigger a full mirror scan. So during one, two, three hours, the time for the all mirrors to be scanned from scratch and the database to be repopulated from scratch, all the traffic will be sent in the fallback, which is archive Jenkins IO, which has all the files. On digital ocean. So that will increase a bit the credit consumption on digital ocean. I don't see that as the problem, quite the opposite needs to repopulate Redis data from scratch. Uh, so yeah, I think we should do this as soon as possible. So we will fix the issue unless there are uh, any objection. I was thinking on planning it for Wednesday or Thursday this week. No objection? Okay, so no, yep. so just to be sure, I understand. So when we do that, there will be a brief period where, where while the data is being reconstructed, we'll be redirecting to archives.jenkins.io instead of to the mirrors. That's the failover. Exactly. Okay. So, so we may get a surge of reports that we've overwhelmed archives.jenkins.io. Yes, but the machine is quite comfy. Oh, okay. Good. Yep. All right. If okay. if we are uh, scared, I don't mind uh, um, ruining the machine first. We can uh, no, no, I think I, I don't remember exactly. Let, uh, I so think so long as you thinking. do it during your working hours, I am happy because <laughs> you will take whatever approach is necessary. Please don't do it at the end of your working day because <laughs> I won't have anything, any way of helping it. So I should have done it before my holidays. Crap. Yeah, <laughs> the best, the best thing. I'm not here. So go as you wish. Go word. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Um, next issue. Uh, that's the one I opened. It's a build issue, not priority. I will. Uh, I propose uh, it will. Be, it should be easy. I propose I will spend the time required to check the GitHub app permission because on CI Jenkins IO that project is failing to scan. Uh, if it's uneasy, that will be fixed and start building again. If it's not, I will delay it. The second party, the second part of the issue is um, uh, related to merging pipelines. That's a more tricky one. Uh, I want to do this uh, later. So chocolatey inst uh, installer not working as we mentioned for Python on Packer image ref the proxy ACP for Packer. So let's delay like the GDK twenty one. And uh, so the issue about backend extension indexer failing on infra CI, as per Daniel, I'm keeping this one open. Uh, thanks, Mark, for doing the issue link for me. That avoided me to, to wait, spend quite some time on searching, but we have all the project never finished. So uh, the idea is that we will have to monitor our private builds, especially critical builds like this one on both well, trusted and, and infra. So, so I appreciate you calling it a critical build, but for me, we lived without it for a year, so it can't be that critical. But Fair. but monitoring yeah. our own stuff is a good thing, right? Yeah. Monitoring things is a good thing, and 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 it's it is valid. We knew we knew at least I've known, and I think Kevin's known for a year that this thing is broken, but. Yeah. 
and and we knew that we didn't have the time or the capacity to work on it. So so monitoring it is a good thing. I've got another one, pipeline step stock generator, which is the similar kind of thing that needs similar kind of monitoring. So it's a, I yeah. think it's healthy. Yep. I remember Hervé started some proof of concept that were in fact not viable. But after discussing Daniele and I a month ago, we had a clean solution. I think that's what Daniel asked since years to Olivier. So that's quite some years. The idea will be a each build should have a post step that writes uh, a report somewhere publicly, uh, which so is a, the last build time. Right. Public, and so public, a public destination that we can then monitor from public, public exactly. results. Right. Exactly. And then we add Datadog rules that say, hey, if there are more than 24 hours between the detect the public uh, marked last time, then we go. So we can dream of a YAML file or whatever and pipeline library that will do this, mm -hmm. like uh, commit uh, or publish, publish build metadata or whatever. The other solution will be to have a, a magical monitoring such as the Datadog or anything. But the issue we had with Datadog uh, prompted us to remove it for, for infra CI, and we don't want the Datadog plugin untrusted at all. Hence the proposal for pipeline library that write a public report. Mm -hmm. I would have an update clear that watch those re public reports and, and publish an issue if we are late. Yeah, uh, some are critical if the update center fails, I would expect pager duty to ring. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, which I, think, I think update CLI as a monitoring tool is feels, <laughs> yeah. feels funny to me. It just feels slippery odd. slope is the word you're searching yeah. for. Yeah. Feels funny. <laughs> I just <laughs> don't funny. want to alert every every five minutes. Right, that. right. But but, I mean... but the alerting tools can give us yeah. say, hey, this this one update center if it's down, we want to know probably yeah. within seconds if it's yeah. down, at least within minutes. Whereas Backend extension indexer, okay, we should know within a month, probably, right? Yeah, great. But we could have Datadog moni uh, monitor and dashboard. Right. And for the most critical of these monitors, then it it rings page your duty. Uh, we have right. the same for metrics alerts. So right. we just have to build a dashboard. And I'm proposing to delay triage on all the GDK21 and account in Kinseyo, because we already have plenty of work right now. Okay, I tried to cover everything from the past two weeks. Thanks, Paul, for the huge work you you run. Uh, we're on, we are 15 minutes late. So unless you have another topic, I propose we delay for next week and we I've, start. Yep. I've got one more topic. P could you please go up to the announcement section where I added <laughs> one more announcement that I forgot? Oh, yes, the Ellie. <laughs> yep. Okay, Jenkins elections are in progress. Please be sure that you encourage your friends that are Jenkins contributors to register to vote. We have 70 registrations now. That's good. That is certainly better than having 25. But given that there are, in a typical month, 500 contributors to Jenkins, 70 is a dismayingly low registration volume. Right. That's that's we 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 really do have data that says every month 500 independent individuals contribute to Jenkins in in very measurable, visible ways. So so please encourage your friends and colleagues and other contributors to register to vote. And yes, we'll do another blog post and I'm going to keep sending annoying emails to people saying you should register to vote. <laughs> Is there anyone in this room not registered yet? Oh, don't Raise ask that question because I don't want, I think I already know the answer though. I've checked already, Damien, and, and the answer to that question is no. Yeah. Everyone everyone is registered here, right? Yeah, I, I, I checked the registration. List. You would have kid us already, you know. Right. <laughs> Sent reminders already, if necessary. <laughs> That's the diplomatic way to say it. <laughs> right. Um, I, I have another question. I don't know if it's the place to ask for, but uh, what's the process to ask to be owner of the Jenkins Infra, uh, um, not repo, but the whole organization, organization? Uh, organization to see all those uh, um, GitHub action and, and, and rights? What I was lock out. Oh, good point. Good, yeah, good point. Because uh, Hermes doesn't have uh, access, at least at that time, to his account. So I was locked out. Yeah, good point. Uh, it's the Jenkins Infra mailing list, not the private one, the public one. 
Yeah. So, okay. so what I think Stefan, what you're asking is how do you become a GitHub yeah. organization admin for the Jenkins dash infra organization? Right? I think, I think the correct word is, is owner because the list, uh, no, no, I, it's I admin. Did, I did free. Oh, no, sure? maintainer, maintainer. Uh, I did a know. few a few screenshots. It's in the Jenkins Infra okay. ERC. But yeah, the, the goal is to have administrative permissions. Yeah. You need you need yep. the right permissions, yep. and we, there's some permissions gap for you. So yeah, that's Jenkins Infra. Good Jenkins Infra mailing list. I didn't realize that we had a gap between your permissions and Hervé's permissions or Damien's permissions. So that that we should plug, fill that gap, absolutely. Yep. Yeah, but I, I didn't know the process if we had to ask something right. specific. So is the Jenkins public mailing the best place, Mark, or maybe Jenkins CI dev? I don't remember in which one we were asking for. I, I don't, I, yeah, good question. A double check, I thought it was, yeah, I, I you're right. I don't know, maybe it is Jenkins dev. I, I'm going to search for Airways because Airways had admin permission. So I assume we asked. If yeah. we didn't, I will search for me because I asked uh, for sure. And mm -hmm. then I will uh, tell you, Stefan, is that okay? Thank or you. Or I will so send much. an email uh, uh, to back you. Thank on this you. One. Okay, be for because I will forget, you know, that's, that's fresh. Yeah, yeah. I remember right. because you spoke about that, but I will forget. And Good. the day I will need it, I will not have it to ask on the proper mailing list. Good. All right. Anything else? That's, I don't think so. OK, so I'm going to stop sharing screen, and I'm going to stop recording, and see you next week, folks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.